Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be painting this Middle Imperial Roman by A&A &A Miniatures. This is a really cool line and pretty much the only line of miniatures for the 3rd century, the crisis years of the Roman Empire. And what I really like about A&A's line is that all the legionaries have such a wide variety of equipment on, really showing that transition period from early imperial to the late Roman army. Here this guy has a scale hood, he has scale mail, he has manichae on his arms, and it's it's a far cry from your traditional line of Roman miniatures where everyone's wearing Lorica Segmentata, the segmented plate armor. And these miniatures are also sculpted by the same guy that does the Aventine miniatures range, if you're familiar with them. So they're really cool heroic style miniatures. They definitely are a little beefier than your typical miniatures that are coming out now. Like if you have Victrix, they do very uh, accurate human proportions. These are a little bit different. So because they have exaggerated proportions, I'm going to be painting them in a non-metallic metal style. I think that the dramatic contrast between light and dark that non-metallic metal allows will go well with the kind of exaggerated look proportions on these miniatures. So first thing I need to do is mix up the colors I'm going to use for my non-metallic metals. So here I'm just mixing white into black, getting a variety of shades of gray. And I'm even mixing a little bit of blue in there. I like my my uh, metal tones to have a little bit of blue when I'm doing non-metallic metals. I don't know why, I just think it looks better. It looks even a little bit more exaggerated, uh, which is again what I'm going for here. So as I'm painting the sword here, I'm going to be using a pretty standard technique for painting non-metallic swords in that I'm going to kind of imagine a five spot on a dice and I'm going to put one of my shadows in the middle of the sword and then on the opposite side of the sword, I'm going to put it near the handle and near the end of the sword. And once I have those areas in, I'm going to block out my highlights with a mid-tone gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while the paint is still wet, work up to almost pure white. So I'm gonna keep adding more and more white into the gray, and I'm kind of doing little hash marks, and again, the paint is still dry, so they, it kind of mixes into the darker tones I've already put down. And since this is gonna be a quick and dirty job, you're gonna see some hash marks, and you're gonna see some pretty harsh transitions, but the goal is, at least from a few feet away, you'll be able to see some pretty um, stunning highlights on the sword. I'm working up higher and higher, almost to pure white, and then once I get uh, a look that I like to the sword, I'm gonna take a pure white and hit the edges and the tip of the sword to really draw out those highlights and, and that's pretty much it and I'm going to copy this exact same technique on all the different sides of this sword here all right and now just to do a scale hood I'm going to do this pretty quickly by just taking a mid-tone gray and having my brush pretty well loaded here I'm just going to over brush the scales not worrying too much if in certain areas a little bit of paint kind of overloads the scales that's fine not really worried I just want a little bit of that darker tone to show through here. So my first pass of a high highlight, I'm taking pretty much a white with just a little bit of gray and blue mixed in. And I'm gonna hit the areas that I think are going to be catching the most light, basically at the top and bottom of the hood where the crest of the head and kind of where the hood is draping over his shoulders. And I, I did wipe a little bit of paint off the brush and I'm just using the edges there to touch the edge of the individual scales. And then for the final highlight, I'm taking pure white and I'm going to concentrate it in about three different areas. So I, I want light to kind of be streaming down the side of his body here. So at the top of the side of his head here, I'm going to put a lot of white, even getting some into kind of the nooks and crannies of the scale. And then right below it, I'm going to put a little white highlight too. I have a highlight running down the edge of his arm, so I'll put a highlight there to match that. And then a final highlight on the back side of his hood. So that one, again, you're looking at this from a few feet away. It'll look like the hood is shining in the sun. So now we're going to go and paint the brass portions of his armor. And I like kind of a reddish tint to my brass. So here I'm using a burnt sienna color, a dark reddish brown. And I'm going to base coat all of his scale mail with that. And then I'm taking Scale 75's peanut butter color, which again is kind of this brownish yellow color, and I'm going to overbrush all the scales. 
I'm not dry brushing here, I have a pretty loaded brush. I'm just taking the edge of the brush and running it across the scales, leaving only the innermost portions of the male that dark burnt sienna color. And since this paint's pretty thin, I'm actually gonna have to do several coats to build it up to a color that I'm happy with. Then I moved on to a Naples yellow type of color, and I'm going to be hitting all the areas that I know light will be striking. So here on his back, the bottom portions of the male, here on his chest, and again the lower portions here, leaving some of the male with just that peanut butter highlight. And then I'm going to take only a few sections of the male and actually take that Naples yellow press it into all areas of the scale, even into areas that you would imagine would be in shadow, just to again, give an exaggerated highlight. And on those areas that I kind of concentrated my highlight, I'm then gonna take pure white and just hit the edges of the scales. And again, from a distance, it will really look like the male shining in certain areas from the sunlight hitting it. So here you can see I've so here I've zoomed out and you can really see that when you're looking at these guys on the wargaming table, you're going to be able to really notice those highlights. Something I've been working on in all my paint schemes. I really want my figures on the table to have some more contrast than what I've been doing previously. So now we're going to do the skin tones. So I started off with Scale 75's African Shadow, a really dark purple brown color. And it will take a few passes to get a nice even tone with this paint color. So then I'm going to take the Pink Flesh by Scale 75 and coat most of the areas of his skin with that, only leaving areas I want to be in deepest shadow in that dark purple brown color. And as I'm doing this, I did notice that there's actually a little bit of a hole. There's a, a casting defect near his um, left eye. So I'm going to have to be careful about that and try and work some magic here so that you don't notice that puncture wound right below his eye. And then I took some golden flesh and mixed it into the pink flesh by scale 75. And now I'm just going to be hitting the top of his cheeks, uh, the bridge of his nose, the kind of the top of his forehead there, his lip, just areas that I want to highlight about 25% of his face here or so, and I'm also gonna use these on his hands as well. Then I'm taking pure golden flesh and I'm just hitting the highest areas here, the top of his cheek, the bottom of his nose, his lip here. I'll also use this color for all the knuckles on his hands. And with that, we'll be done with the skin tones. So here we're gonna be painting all of the leather portions of his armor. So I'm going for a darker leather to contrast with his armor here. So I painted first a base coat of black leather, and then I'm going to be going over it with a mid-tone, earth-tone brown, thinned down quite a bit so the dark leather still kind of shines through. And then for my highlights, I decided I wanted to kind of go with almost a yellowish color, so I took this Gobi Brown by Scale 75, and I'm gonna use that to hit the portions I want to highlight. And I, it actually does a good job of kind of looking like some worn leather area here. So here on his uh, tergis, I'm hitting just the upper portions and the middle areas, places I want to draw out the highlight. Then I just added a little bit of buff into that, a buff color. And I'm hitting the really high edges, the places I want to catch some light, even making some little distressed areas in the leather with this color. So now I'm going to go and paint the rest of his clothing here. I'm going to paint his pants just a blue color, and I'm going to spend a very small amount of time painting this. I'm just going to pretty much take the metal colors that I have, mix in some lighter blues, and be done with it. And if you look very carefully, you can also see that I'm wearing a princess band-aid because everything I own in my house is covered in princesses. So there you go. Three girls equals princesses on your band-aids pretty awesome. So after I get that blue color in, I'm just, again, taking a mid-tone, not worrying about blending at all. Again, the focus on this model is not going to be his pants. I spend very little time anymore worrying about how my model's pants look. And I'm just hitting a few different highlight layers, and then I'm going to go for a really stark contrast by taking a almost pure white and just hitting the edges of the pants, the edges of the folds, places that 
Um, I think need a little bit of a highlight. And there we're done with this pan. So then next up, I am going to be painting the tunic of this model using a technique that I've shown before. It's kind of sketching technique where I'll take a darker color, like here a purple, and I'll trace out where I want the shadows to go. And then I'll go and take a bright red color, water it down to a glaze and kind of run it over that color. And then after several passes of the red color, uh, it'll have a pretty decent blend between that dark purple and this red scarlet color that I'm laying down. And once I get a nice rich color with that scarlet, I'm going to add a little bit of white into the scarlet and just highlight here the areas that of his tunic that were covering kind of his knee where I know light will be hitting. And I'll just make a little hash mark, some texture in the clothing. And then as a final layer, I'm just going to take another glaze of red, run it over those kind of pink highlights to help tie them into the rest of the tunic. Final thing we're going to do on this model is I'm going to paint this sheath here. And I thought a green would go well with the color scheme of this model. So here I just take a, I believe this is Leho black green, I believe. And I'm just going to be mixing in, doing a little bit of wet blending, mixing in kind of a light green, hunter green into the middle of the sheath here. And mixing those two colors together until I get a highlight that I'm satisfied with. If you want to practice smooth blends, smooth wet blending, sheaths are really nice because you can just kind of play with the colors, go back and forth between the dark color and your highlight color and not worry too much about how it looks. And then once I'm happy with the transition between those two, I'll put a little bit of white there in the middle and then blend that into the two other colors to get some decent contrast on that sheath. And with that, we are finished. And here is the model. And I zoomed out a little bit just so that you can see what the model will look like on your wargaming table. And I'm really happy with how this non-metallic technique is drawing your eyes to certain parts of his armor that I really wanted to emphasize. And I think it looks pretty good. It's not going to look amazing up close. We did a pretty rough job with the highlights. But in a unit, I think these guys are going to look pretty spectacular. And it really didn't take all that much longer than a true metallic paint scheme. And this will just be another way for me to practice non-metallic metals. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with it until recently. And after a few hundred of these guys, I'm pretty sure I'll feel pretty comfortable painting in non-metallics. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. If you did, please hit a like. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all soon. Take care.